more about that. So when you when you say a CEO or leader uh, defines reality, what does that mean? It, it market means a number of things. One, I think it's primary task, not just one of a number to define reality. And it reminds me actually of uh, way back in time when you learned in the infantry school at Fort Benning, Georgia. I was 19 at the time. This was 1944. Way back seems, but still seems very real to me. You were given, you had to learn a thing called a five paragraph field order. You know, and I can't remember what all those five things were, but they had to do with perspective of where you are in the, in the terrain. It had, you know, I should look it up on the um, Google right now. Five paragraph field order. It was very clear. And it was a way of providing perspective. It was a way of, of indicating, uh, mind you, we're not in battle, but we're a CEO now of a global corporation. Where we are in this space of our business regarding our competitors, regarding the future, regarding the people within our own organization, regarding that clogged constituency of stakeholders who are often noisy or more often unnoticed, and yet they're pivotal to the success of our endeavor, our institution, our platoon, our regiment, our global corporation. I don't think you can lead effectively, especially now. And defining reality is an abstract phrase, but it really means providing perspective about what our, what our resources are and what those we're competing with are and with where our customers are. All those stakeholders, I guess that's a way of putting it. If you can clearly define your stakeholders and their significance to you in the next year or the next month. That's what I'm talking about. And a leader, I think, who has that capacity to almost like, uh, it should become as a natural as I think, where are we? Where are we going? How are we going to get to our goals? That is what I mean by defining reality. And it, in a way, the word reality and define are abstract, but I'm really meaning where are we on the ground? And where are our competitors? And where are our customers? And how are they changing? And do we have the resources? All of these things have to do with a five paragraph field order. And as soon as we're through with this interview, I'm going to go on to Google and see a U.S. Army five paragraph field order. Because frankly, I don't remember what they were specifically, but where we are on the ground and where we want to go and how do we get there? Those, those are the questions about perspective. What, what's the positive impact of being a leader who defines reality and what's the negative impact of a, a leader who doesn't? If you reality? don't, you're fumbling the future. Period. I love that. Say more, well, you're fumbling the future. Yeah. Well, it just means if you don't, if you don't know where you are and where you're heading and what the obstacles are and what resource you have, you're you're just you know, kind of in a nihilistic, boundaryless, you know, uh, world that's throbbing with anticipation, but you're standing still. You're simply treading water. You're going nowhere, baby. I want this to be clear because unless that idea of defining reality is really understood, it means if you observe great coaches, that's what they're doing every second. Do we have the reserves? Is he playing to his best? Is he in his best game? Is he having one of his off days? All of these things are. Um, right now, in your, this interview, you are defining reality with someone named Warren Bennis. And you're hoping that <clears throat> the conditions are such that we're going to 
Um, what, what about the lighting of this room? What about the sound system? What about how is Warren? Is he as, on his off? Is this, do I have the right? All of this, Mark, is what you're doing, is defining reality before the interview. And as the seconds and minutes go on, you keep saying, "Well, you know, Warren's of a certain age. Maybe he's going to tire before the time is up." I've got to think about all those things. Oh, how's the lighting? And is this, is this microphone still adjusted correctly? And is, is there a parallel? We were talking earlier before the interview about doctors, and I think of surgeons when they prepare surgery and they set the surgical field mm -hmm. and they dress it mm -hmm. and and, uh, and they have all their proper scanning equipment set. I, I'm thinking that there may maybe there's an analogy there that that before they proceed into mm. uh, into you know what this uh, yes. you know what this reminds you of when you ask that question. It should have reminded you of. It certainly did me. Checklist Manifesto. Do you know the book? Say more. Well, it, it's, it's a book. Called, which, you know, it's a magnificent little book called Checklist Manifesto, and it's by a surgeon who has an Indian name. His last name is Gawande, G-A-W-A-N-D-E, Atul. He writes regularly for The New Yorker, for The Times. And, um, and he, he wrote this little book called Checklist manifesto. It means the things you have to do to prepare yourself for any journey, for anything. And he himself, as a surgeon, laid down a certain set of steps for surgeons, and guess what? For airplane pilots, you know, including even little things like start ignition. Now think of all the steps you get to before you, but how uh, unselfconscious, unfortunately, we become unless we pay attention to all those things that um, make you achieve your goals, help your organization. All these steps that we have to be totally conscious of every minute, which means full concentration, which means, Mark, as you know, I've written about, I've stolen this phrase from Saul Bellow, being a first-class noticer. And you can't lead without being a first-class noticer. And that has got related to defining reality, noticing all the possible disruptive innovations that Clay Christensen writes about. It's even at this moment, I'm making sure that the, uh, I'm thinking of you making sure that the sun, which is just coming at a slight angle, is going to shift, so you're going to have to shift the camera or shift Warren. This is every minute we're defining reality. Uh, Am I, for example, getting through to the audience you want me to get through to? That's another example.